Well, Uber drivers in Britain must now be treated as workers, not independent contractors. That follows a ruling from UK Supreme Court paving the way for drivers to get benefits like paid holidays and minimum wage. It also raises the question about whether the same protections could be coming to Uber drivers in Canada. Samara Balitsky is an employment lawyer and senior associate at Semfiru Tumarkin. She's also co-counsel on a class action lawsuit against Uber in Ontario. Good afternoon. Hi, Margaret. Thanks so much for being here. Now, how significant is this ruling? So it's very significant in the sense that we're going to start to see a lot of these cases pop up. We already have our class action in Ontario, and I expect we're going to start to see many others pop up uh, around Canada and other countries as well as essentially Uber drivers are getting cut up with the fact that they are not receiving the benefits that employees should receive. Well, we talked about paid holidays, minimum wage. But what else would they get as employees that they don't get as contractors? So essentially, it would be anything under employment standards legislation. So when we're talking about Canada, each province has their own employment standards legislation, which differ a little bit from province to province, but essentially they're the same in the sense that they provide protections to employees that are, like you said, minimum wage, statutory holiday pay, vacation pay, uh, protected leave, so uh, you know, parental leave, uh, medical leave, uh, you know, access to EI benefits, all of those things that normally employees would receive, these are the things that the Uber drivers are being deprived of right now. Now, you are currently involved in a class action lawsuit against Uber, so what could this UK decision mean for you? So in terms of the UK decision, while technically a judge in Ontario wouldn't be bound by it, it's really indicative of what a court will do in similar circumstances because the legal system in the UK is actually quite similar to our legal system here in Canada. So when we're looking at uh, you know examples to provide the court, this is going to be a prime example of a very similar set of circumstances where the court in the UK found in favor of the drivers being employees. And what have you been hearing from Uber drivers in Canada uh, in terms of the way they feel about the way they're treated at the moment? So in terms of uh, communication with Uber drivers, we've had a lot of Uber drivers over the last few years reach out to our firm after hearing about the class action and expressing you know, their basically satisfaction and their happiness with the fact that we're bringing this forward because a lot of them have a lot of complaints, a lot of kind of grievances against Uber, uh, and a lot of that is in the form of not having these protections that other employees have. Um, and, you know, a lot of them have these gripes where they're not getting paid very well. Uh, Uber keeps changing the compensation model where these drivers are getting paid less and less. They're not making minimum wage. They're working a lot of hours. And so these are the types of issues that we're hearing from people and the types of concerns that these Uber drivers have. Uh, which they're hoping to be addressed in this class action. Well, we talked a bit about some of the benefits of being treated as an employee, uh, you know, the paid holiday, the minimum wage, but uh, could there be some downsides to being treated as an employee? From our perspective, there wouldn't be any downside at all. I've had a few uh, you know, people ask the question of, you know, what if these Uber drivers are worried about flexibility? And from an employment law perspective, when we're talking about protection and rights that an employee would have, uh, flexibility in hours, for example, is not part of that analysis. So there is you know, a world that can exist where Uber's business model remains intact and these drivers still have the same flexibility, the same uh, ability to change their hours and work when they want, except for the fact that they're earning minimum wage and they have all of the protections that employees should have. Well, how do you see Uber reacting if it, if it continues to lose these legal battles? I mean, the hope is that with this decision in the UK now and as we move forward in our class action, that Uber is going to see that they can't continue uh, to, you know, obviate the laws and that the hope is instead of fighting on all of these issues uh, and fighting what I would call a losing battle, they start to figure out how they can comply with employment standards legislation instead of fighting uh, and depriving employees of their rights. How long do you think it could be until Uber drivers in Canada are treated as employees? So in terms of it being a country-wide uh, application, uh, that would be something that the Supreme Court of Canada might have a hand in. So the first step in terms of having this apply in Canada is a class action that's brought in a province. So in Ontario right now, our firm has a, a class action against Uber 
and it's going to take some time. We're in the beginning steps of it. Uh, the first stage is to have the class actually certified by the court, and those are the steps that we're going through right now, and we'll have a decision on that actually this year. And then it will be a question of going before the court on the actual issue of whether these drivers are employees or independent contractors. So if Uber uh, decides to fight this tooth and nail all along the way until a court actually orders them to change anything, uh, just like they did in the UK, we're looking at potentially a few years until these changes actually start to come into play. How optimistic are you that we're going to see these changes in Canada? We're very optimistic about it. We think that we will have a similar result to the UK eventually, uh, and that employee uh, Uber drivers will be classified properly as employees. It's just going to take a little bit more time to get there. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Margaret.